So Aaron, over to you. All right. So yeah, as Ryan said, if you do have questions uh, that come up, just throw them in the chat so you don't forget them um, and we can chat about them as they come up. Um, so I, I kind of put together some general ideas. There's there's two main topics that we're gonna that I'm gonna address tonight, um, which is particularly around impact activities uh, for 2021, and uh, and then also just growing our rugby clubs. So um, I'll kind of, I'll focus on impact activities first, and then we can open it up for some questions there. Um, but then there'll be time at the end we can address the questions, but just throw them in there so you don't forget them, and and we'll address them. So impact activities as a first thing, uh, what is that? It's, I mean, it's kind of a, just a fancy name, um, meaning that there's an activity that's there and it's gonna make an impact and it's typically associated with another event um, is, is really just what an impact activity is. And next year is actually a really fun opportunity because we have some really major events that are specific to rugby but then we also have some other events too that we can utilize to make that big impact in our communities. Um, so if we look at what we have in front of us, the obvious ones are the Olympics, okay? So they're moved from this year to next year, still planning on happening. I'm sure they're gonna go off, which means that all the different sports are happening and rugby sevens will be happening. Uh, we also have during that same time, that July, August timeframe, the Rugby World Cup that's gonna be in New Zealand. So big opportunity here for women's rugby and to push that, especially with Canada being in both of these. Um, you know, it's especially from the women's side of things, uh, definitely a chance to medal again in the Olympics and then even uh, again in the World Cup. So um, we want to capitalize on that success. I would say, I can probably say this out loud and I don't think many people would argue against me that Canada probably did not take advantage of the fact that the women won the bronze last Olympics in the way that we could have. Um, we just weren't prepared for it. And I think a lot of people got interested in rugby after seeing it on TV and seeing what that is and really curious, they then are gonna turn to your clubs and your community to say, how do I get involved and what could I do around this? So we wanna make sure that we get ahead of that and that we're actually creating some of those opportunities for people to get involved. Um, and we're gonna talk about how to do that. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about local events, um, which could be national and international as well. Um, you know, looking at things like the Ontario games or, you know, the Canada games, or there might be something else that's happening in your community, could be nationally across Canada, could be, you know, internationally like Commonwealth games, but Canada is participating in it and rugby's in it. Um, or it could be something else that's going on. And those are all events that you can create impact activities around. And there's no, basically there's no wrong answer here. If there's an event happening, why not create an impact activity around it? So we're gonna go through what, what you can do. Um, so I think with anything that you do, especially as you're getting into these roles, planning is so important um, and making sure you're planning in the right ways. Um, the worst thing that you could do and something that's very common in rugby is we like to do things last minute um, and we like to do things just kind of, hey, we're just gonna do this thing and maybe not plan it out in the right way. So I want you to think about when you're, when you're looking at, hey, there's an event coming up and I wanna plan an impact activity. What's the goal of that activity? So you may be tasked in your role specifically with recruitment. Okay, we gotta grow the numbers in the club. Okay, so maybe that's the goal. The goal is recruitment, which means we have to get people signed up into our program. Maybe the goal is fundraising. Maybe the goal is just to get community members watching games and increasing that fanfare. Um, you just, but just make sure you have a very clear goal in, in the end and make sure that also leads to something. So if you come out and you, let's say you play some touch rugby and then you go and watch one of the games that's happening from the World Cup. Well, that's great, but then how do they, act, like what's the next step? Okay, so what's that goal? The goal is for them to sign up. Well, then we need to make sure we have a component where they sign up. And uh, we also wanna make sure that that's something that's gonna happen pretty quickly. I don't wanna do a fun participation event and then you're like, great, we'd love to see you next year when our program happens. And then they have to wait six months to sign up. So be really intentional about what your activity, the goal of that and the outcome of that. And then ask yourself, who's my audience? Okay, so the audience is really, really important because if you can create 
a, an activity that relates specific to that audience and what their interests are and their needs are, then they're more likely to have a great time and then go into that next step. And sometimes your audience is the person themselves. Sometimes it's maybe the kid that you're working with and their parent. So you have two audiences. Um, so really think about who's my audience, what do they need and what can I create for them? Um, uh, you know, one of the prime things here is uh, we get this a lot with when we're talking about girls and especially the youth levels, we do a lot of events that are co-ed. Well, if you ask yourself, who's my audience and my audience is I'm trying to get more young girls involved, a lot of girls don't want to play with boys and or they had experiences with that and they didn't have a good experience. So then your event and your goal of getting them involved is probably to create a girl specific activity that's going to make her feel more comfortable. And then that's going to increase your number of girls participating. So it's just, it's again, just kind of go through that step-by-step -step process of here's what I want to achieve, who is my audience and let me kind of tailor what it is to that person's needs. Follow-up, so important. Uh, this is, uh, as I mentioned, is what's that next step? So the, a lot of times we do this, we do an event just to do an event and then we don't necessarily have that next step. This is really exciting, I wanna sign up. Oh, we don't have anything for you right now, but come back in four months and then you can sign up. And then we lose that excitement. So we have to be very timely in what that follow-up is. And it could be, maybe you're just signing up for the newsletter. Maybe you're signing up for, you know, to receive information about events. Maybe you're signing up to play. Maybe you're signing up to be a coach or a volunteer. Um, so there's, there's lots of different things that you can do as follow up to that event, but think the whole event through as in what's that next step and how do I keep them involved? And that's, that's that key piece right there. And then the last thing is just how it's managed. Um, again, we, unfortunately with rugby, we tend to throw things together last minute. So we're not really sure who's managing the event itself, who's managing the follow up, who's managing the marketing, who's managing all the different pieces. Um, and it doesn't have to be a lot of people, but you just wanna make sure that that's clear so that you know, you're know you not dropping the ball in, in one of those areas. And you plan this amazing event and then there's no follow-up because no one was managing that. Um, so just really think through these questions as you're starting to plan an event. And then you can really, you know, anything can happen. So. Um, the next one is just really about getting creative around events. So when we talk about, uh, again, impact activities, we're trying to make an impact in a specific way. So again, it may be recruitment and you can do that in a couple different ways. Participation in recruitment events, like actually coming and playing. So I come out and I get to try rugby, whether it's skill stations or I play some flag rugby, or I, you know, play whatever, like just kind of see it and kind of try it out and actually get to touch the ball and pass the ball and feel it. Those are really great options and a great way to get more kids involved or, or get more people engaged. Showcase type events are also great. Um, this might be maybe the Ontario Blues are gonna play a exhibition match and that's what you're promoting. So now it's not necessarily that they're having to get involved, it's maybe increasing that fan base or they wanna see something about it so, or like know a little bit more about it. So they come out and actually watch a game. Uh, partnership events are, um, I, if I could stress anything, partnership events are really great because if you partner with another organization, they already have a group of people that are part of their membership and you're just tapping into that. So I put up here a couple of examples, um, again, just to get the juices flowing. Ontario Ultimate, um, when I worked at USA Rugby, we actually had a partnership um, just very briefly with USA Ultimate and we actually got our staff and we went out and we got the Ultimate staff and we played half the game of Ultimate and half the game was Touch Rugby. And everybody got mixed into teams and we got to learn a bunch of stuff about the other organization. And it's, it's just such a great thing because here's a group of people and we can market to their membership and then introduce and tease them a little bit with some rugby so then we get some of them involved. Um, and then you have double the amount of effort going into plan an event. Yoga events too, um, you know, no business is off limits, I'd say. So if maybe you wanna do a partnership with a yoga studio and you go and you play some touch rugby for the first hour, 
and then you stretch it out afterwards for an hour and then maybe you have you know a social gathering at that at the yoga studio and that's a great partnership event brings people into their studio brings people into playing rugby so it's a win-win on both sides training education uh, not um it's not as i'd say more open to the community this is a little bit more internal but you can do some professional development or train your parents um, but again, that can be an impact activity, again, depending on the goal that you want to do. If you want to increase your number of coaches and referees, this might be a really great opportunity to do that and run some training and education type things around that. Community competitions, um, you could do t-shirt designs with school, school age children and they design a t-shirt and then you actually produce all the t-shirts and then uh, for the winner and it's maybe voted on by members of the community. Um, it could be rugby focused or like an essay contest, something like that. Um, also community competitions like corporate touch, go to a big corporation. Maybe, you know, somebody who works for, I don't know, here in where I live. So I'm in Colorado and we have a Google, Google's a massive thing in Boulder, Colorado. I could go to Google and they create teams of all their Google employees. Microsoft actually used to do this. Um, and then they, you, we do a touch rugby tournament and it's all Google employees and it's a way to bring rugby into Google and it's this whole corporate touch event. A lot of them then join the, you know, the local club teams, uh, they can bring their families out. You can make it a massive kid event and family event. Um, so that's always a good option as well. And then lastly, uh, public viewing events. Um, this is really about things that you can run when those games are going on. So Olympics and the world cup find those local community restaurants or bars that are showing the games and you can do silent auctions and raffles or you can do fundraisers around that and really just bring you're bringing more business to that that local entity you're also then showcasing rugby because how many times is it that we're like i'd love to watch rugby but it's never on tv now you have two opportunities where it's going to be on tv and then let's create some events around that I know I'm talking really fast. I feel like I'm talking really fast. Um, so, so what I want you to know about this before I get into like general growth and development is these are just a few ideas of things that you can do. And there's truly, I mean, the, the sky is the limit. There's no event that's a wrong event um, in terms of, hey, what about this? Or what about this? Likely, yes, you can make it work as long as you're making sure that you're asking these right questions. And then, um, and just making sure what is my goal here and how am I going to put it together. And a lot of times we just don't do anything around big events like the Olympics or, or the World Cup. So now's the perfect time to plan that and say, there's going to be rugby happening in July. Let's have, you know, something happen at the, maybe the end of June. I don't know when in July it's happening, but maybe you have something happen at the end of June and then some viewing events in July or or you have something happen and then right afterwards everybody goes and has a social and watches some of the games on TV. There's a lot of different things you can do in this space. Before I move on to the next section, I want to make sure, are there any questions specifically about impact activities or how you might be able to build them around specific events? And Ryan, maybe um, you can help me out. With I have chat. a question just around marketing for it. Yeah. Um, I've run a lot of events for my club, but a lot of the advertisements I've done for it is on like um, Canva, which is like a free, a free marketing resource. Yep. So I guess my question would be like, do you have any advice for someone that's an amateur and is trying to get better? Like any tools that you guys use to market your events? Yeah. So I think, so I'm going to talk a little bit about marketing in the next section. I made this presentation on Canva. Okay. love Canva. It's yeah, fantastic. so do I. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really great. So for those that don't know it, it's it's wonderful. It makes you look super professional and awesome, um, which I love. And so um, I'm going to just put a pin in that. I'll, I'll address a couple different things. And then uh, I'm assuming Brian might cover uh, some other tools and things that you can use for that. Okay, right on. And then I have one more question. I'm sure. sorry if I'm going to hog your time a bit, but this is awesome. Don't ever uh, apologize. Keep going. Yeah, I... I have like rugby season is like four months long. So I run events like every Saturday we have a, a, like a game at home. The problem with me is that it's hard for me to plan ahead of time because it switches so fast. Like one week I'm running event for pride week and the next week I'm trying to run alumni week. And then the next week I'm trying to do this. And I'm usually the only one really behind that. 
is there any advice you have for just like putting things like set in stone before like the season starts? So like it, like an organizational piece that would help me like not be so last minute with everything. Sure. So um, the best thing I would say is kind of create an operational plan for yourself okay. um, for the year or ahead of the season. And then that way you kind of know, and then, and then what you'll do is if you know that you're going to have um, like the alumni event that you have it, and then all the things that go into planning the alumni event is knowing, and you kind of work out back from there. So kind of uh, outcome-based planning. Okay. So okay. I have the event. I know exactly what it needs. Here are all the pieces. This is this I need to get done a month beforehand. This I need to get done two months beforehand. So I think the ones that you know are going to be happening every year yeah. or that you want to have, like right now is the perfect time to plan and say, okay, in April next year is going to be, I'm making this up, but it's going to be our alumni event. Okay. Then what are all the things that need to happen within that? And then set some deadlines for yourself to say by January, I need the location set. I need a flyer made. I need, you know, at least, I don't know, the dates and times and the logistics figured out. And then in February, it's now I need my volunteers in place. And then by March, if you haven't yet already started marketing is start marketing at that point. Okay. Um, so really set timelines. For sure. And actually, um, I think you can probably repurpose it for your needs, but I think if I'm remembering correctly, uh, on the Rookie Rugby website, there's an event planning guide for mm -hmm. try days and things like that. Uh, take a look at it because I think there's a section in there that's about like three months ahead of time, you should be doing this five months ahead of time. You should be doing this. Okay. And I think the more that we in rugby can get probably six months in advance, like if you have registration opening for your season, that should be announced six months in advance okay. because every other sport in Canada is doing that. And yeah. we're not, we're usually so, behind everybody else. Exactly. So the more that we can kind of align and get ahead of things and it, it's going to be difficult at first, for sure, because you might be the only person in rugby that's well, trying that's to do <laughs> six, six months in advance. But then the more that you do that, more people are going to get on board and say, actually, I love this. And now, yeah, let's, that's going to force us to do things in advance mm -hmm. um, and get some things set. So, yeah, I would say definitely an operational plan, really plan it out for yourself. So then all you really know, if you get that done now, you know exactly what your year looks like and yeah. exactly when you need to start looking at things and, and having those deadlines in place. Okay, right on. Thank you. Great question. Any other questions before I move on? Cool. All right. So, um, so growing our rugby clubs. So now we're going to kind of extrapolate this out to a little greater sense. Um, and I know that Ryan mentioned uh, before you all jumped on that uh, a lot of you are going to focus in the youth sector, um, but some might focus a little bit, maybe the the older older youth or or even in adults. Um, all of these practices apply. Um, so we'll kind of mention that throughout. So I think um, what I want you to focus on when we're talking about growth is again, it's that planning piece, it's asking the right questions. So these are the four that I'd like you to focus on when we're talking about how do I grow my club? Okay. And there's, and there's likely a lot of really good things you've already been doing. And then hopefully this will kind of open your mind up to a couple other opportunities that you can explore. So we're going to cover these four things. Who's, who's your audience? And I can't stress that enough. Um, the user experience. So not you, but who's actually using your product. So, you know, the people coming into your club. Marketing. So we'll talk about that a little bit in some different ways to market. And then actual types of recruitment, which are very, they're related to each other, but slightly different. So I'm going to go through each of these. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll actually, I have a little fun, fun activity we'll, we'll try at the end here. So first off, who's your audience? Um, so that example that I gave you about youth girls getting involved, I cannot stress that enough. The more that you know your audience, the more that you can create a product that's going to work for them. And that means the more that they're going to use that product. So if you create it with that person in mind, then, you know, it's, there's, there's no doubt in their mind that that product's for them. So then they're going to feel more comfortable being involved. So when you start thinking about who your audience is, so in this case, let's say we are growing our rookie rugby program in that minor level, or maybe the, even the junior level, your audience here is, actually twofold. You have your kids who are your, going to be your players. That's one audience. And then you also have your parents who's going to be another audience who are the decision makers. So when you think about who your audience is, where do they gather? Meaning where are lots of kids coming together to participate in activities? Schools, 
community programs, churches, malls, parks, all those kind of things. Where are parents gathering? Okay, so parents are typically gathering probably at restaurants or community programs, all those places that their kids are. So when we think about how are we gonna market our program or tailor our, our program to our audience's needs is we have to start targeting those areas, targeting schools, targeting communities, targeting those different things. And then we're gonna start thinking about well, too, what are the interests? Okay, so kids, they want something, typically when they're, they're that age, that minor and junior level, that they want something super fun. They want something that their friends are doing. Um, and typically probably there's some influence there from their parents. Uh, and they have a lot of other interests as well, but they really wanna be around their friends and they really wanna have a good time. For parents, when it comes to youth activities, then they want to know that it's fun for their kids, their kids are having a good time, probably cost-effective, that it's safe. And especially, um, you know, the more information we can give them the better, because those are the interests that they have for their kids. And then other things to consider as well, this could be, it could be really anything, but you know, an example of this might be, if I have a program that say inner city, or maybe it's not even inner city, wherever it is, and transportation might be an issue, okay? So that's something to consider. So you might want to put transportation in your marketing efforts of, this is something that's included in our program because that's gonna market better to your audience. Or maybe in a certain area that you live, crime is an issue. So, you know, you're going to market that in a little bit of a different way to push out those considerations so that it's more attractive to your audience. So you just want to kind of think about who am I trying to create a program for or who, who is my program for and then how do I kind of target them in a specific way. Once you get that audience kind of dialed in, you want to think about the user experience. Um, if I make an assumption that majority of you probably have you know, are just crazy about rugby and you love rugby because that's what rugby people do. Um, you have that amazing love for the sport that your audience does not yet have yet. So what I mean by that is it may be a normal thing for you to go and show up at practice and start straight in a tackle and shooting the boot, whether it's water or beer at the end of practice and you're partying and you're joking and all that kind of stuff. And that's fun because that's your family experience with the sport that's not necessarily the experience that a kid and their parent or even a new player as an adult wants to have when they show up to their first practice. Okay, so you have to think about what is the first impression. So when I first go to the website, what does that look like? When I first sign up for the program and I get the email from the coach, what is that like? What does that email even look like? When I show up to the field for the first day with my son or daughter, what is that? Am I, am I met with, oh, hey, just go ahead, throw your boots on and here, let's go. Or, hey, welcome. So excited to have you here. And, you know, here's some information for you, you know, whatever that looks like. So you may need to look internally a little bit too on what is the impression, the first impression that people are going to have coming in your program. And also understand what they're afraid of and what their reservations are, especially with kids. The parents have a lot of fears and reservations around, you know, the rugby, the, the actual sport themselves, but then also around too that, um, you know, the kids a little bit afraid, they may not know everybody on the team. So think about all that kind of stuff. And then lastly, I'd say too, is having that retention focus. We, we typically think quantity over quality, meaning we have to get 50 new people into our program and that's great, but then how do we actually keep them in our program? So if we only think about getting their foot in the door, that's one step of the process. We need to be thinking longer term and how do we actually keep them in the room? Um, and there's some things that we can do and change in our culture and in our club in order to make that happen. So really put yourself in the shoes of your user and think about their experience. Marketing is key. So again, there are many, many different types of market, different types of marketing, different ways that you can market. You can market in person at events, fairs, festivals, markets, have a booth, um, guerrilla marketing, getting flyers out and handing those out. Um, then there's the whole online space, which is social media, um, maybe blogs, vlogs, things like that, Facebook groups. Um, and again, you want to think, you want to tie all of these together. So think about who your audience is. If I have a program that's rookie rugby, I'm not going after the six-year-old kids, I'm going after their parents. Well, their parents might not be on TikTok, but their parents might be on Facebook and Instagram. Well, that's where I need to target my marketing. 
Um, and I'm sure Brian will get more into that as well. But you want to hit marketing everywhere because again, we're not we're not the first thing. We're not the second thing. We're probably not even the fifth thing that parents are thinking about when they think, I want to sign my daughter up for rugby. We're probably in like maybe like five plus in terms of the first things that come to mind. So we need to be really deliberate about how we market and just market the hell out of it because the more that we do that, the more we become a household name and then the more that people know about us. Consider your language, your imagery, your colors. Um, I get a lot of flack for using pink with my girls' programs, but guess what? From the age we are born, we as females are just seeing something pink, we know it's for us. So why would I not make rugby pink? That means immediately a girl sees a pink thing, she's gonna think rugby's for her. And then I can bring her in and then I can you know, work on all the other stuff. Uh, so think about what kind of language imagery you're using. Typically we show a lot of just somebody running with the ball and it's a lot of times a backline player. And that leaves out that whole other demographic of kids that may not look like that. And they wanna be able to see who, you know, somebody that looks like them on that flyer. And then that's gonna be, that's what's gonna give that hook and like make them get involved. And then lastly, placement. So again, this is about placement of where, where am I placing that flyer? Where am I placing that flyer online? Where am I writing that article? Where am I taking out that advertisement? Where am I putting that yard sign? Where am I having that event? All of those different things, marketing is really key because where you put it to get in front of a lot of different eyes, that, that's just massively important. So I can't stress marketing enough. If you have a budget to work with, throw the majority of it into marketing in different ways. And, and also I'd say track that. Um, track, hey, how'd you find out about our program? Because then, oh, five of you found out about it from the farmer's market that we had a booth at. Well, I need to put more money into the farmer's market. So start thinking about those things. And then uh, types of recruitment as well. I won't go into all of these. Um, I think they're pretty, pretty straightforward, but these are all the different types of recruitment that you can do. Online is one thing. You can still do print marketing, especially in small communities that have like you know, there's a small community around here, it's called the Brighton Buzz. And, you know, it goes to everybody in their small community, put an advertisement into that. It's going to hit bigger in small communities. Community events like fairs, festivals, uh, concerts, movies in the park, um, farmers markets, anything like that you can have a booth at um, is always a good thing. Um, word of mouth, meaning get your members of your club to help bring a friend day, that kind of stuff, like using the people who are already invested to market for you is really powerful. Uh, signage, like yard signs, things like that are really good. Um, I think in general, you're gonna look at what are other sports doing to get kids signed up for their programs. And we're gonna recreate that for, for rugby, essentially. I'm conscious of time here. So I wanna just do, um, I was gonna do a quick fire round. Uh, maybe we'll just do one to see how it works. So what I want you to do is, I want you to basically buzz in. So I'm gonna give you an age group and I want you to buzz in, maybe make some motion, make a noise, say, ah, I'm gonna buzz in. And then I'm gonna just go through a couple of questions and we're gonna have a, a creative, uh, creative way to grow our game. We're gonna give it a go. We're gonna see how it works. All right, are you ready? Boom, teen boys, 14 to 18. Who's buzzing in? Buzz. Yeah, all right, Larissa. So, um. Larissa, who's, who's our audience here? So our audience is like teenage boys. They're mostly playing video games and or are online. So to get them involved, if you have like um, maybe like a YouTube channel, like Facebook videos of like just scrums or people running into each other, I would say that would be a key way because what they want to do why is- Why did you pick scrums and people running into each other? Because 14 to 18 year old boys love like violence and just hitting each other. I don't know why. No, I maybe know. that's just exactly. like old and people. That's the video game they're playing, right? They're big video games yeah. or shoot them up, beat them up, everything. So that's what that's what's gonna appeal to them. Yeah. Absolutely. I would also probably appeal to like local either football or like maybe even hockey organizations. I was like, football would be a little hard because it's the same time, but especially hockey, because sometimes you'll have those kids that maybe aren't as great on skates but you're like you can do the same thing but on your two feet it's a win-win amazing yeah. and you could do a fun event with 
hey, the first pa- like first hour, we're going to play some hockey and then we're going to, you know, teach you about some rugby and then yeah. get to do both. So awesome. And, and how amazing would it be? They're in the middle of Fortnite and then they get an ad and it's like, you want to play some rugby? And they're like, yeah. oh, this is really exciting. So absolutely. Um, and thank you so much, Larissa. It was really fun. Real quick, um, how about their parents? Would you do a different focus for their parents? For their parents, I might do like a parent information night, and especially because they always think like rugby equals concussions and like brain injuries and all that stuff. So I'd probably like right now, it might be kind of like an online video explaining, especially if you put in like Rowan's Law. I think that would really help because that's a big thing that I know Rugby Ontario and Rugby Canada and like in Ontario, like uh, the government is pushing and be like, we have like procedures in place. If you have like a video of like a first practice and going through the tackle, because I know in high school, like we would like, it would step by step, like one practice, one tryout, we'd focus on like shoulder placement and we'd be like on our knees to really help like get that through. And really for the parents, just focusing on like it, it is safe, you know, it might not look it full speed, but (laughs) we try. Absolutely. So it's good to know what kind of questions those parents are going to have, but it is a very different approach. So maybe at that event where you're doing some hockey and some rugby or that video, like I said, the video is really good. Have the parents there, have them ask questions. So just understand that their focus and their interest might be a little bit different, but they're still, you're trying to get to the same goal, which is they're going to sign their son up for, for rugby. Um, So it's really good to kind of think through those things. All right, I've gone way over on my time, so uh, I don't want to take up Brian's time, but um, let me see. Uh, perfect. Uh, any, I'll, I'll open up for one, one other question and then I'll throw it over to Brian and then we can do more questions at the end. And thank you, Larissa. That was awesome, awesome uh, participation in my quick fire. Cool. All right, I'll toss it over to Brian.